Hello, um, this is a short introductory video for my um, uh, Three Deep Combat cards. So, uh, Three Deep is um, my uh, D6 based system. It incorporates um, solo and group play. But one of the uh, pieces of feedback I had for it was that if everyone's using kind of every option, then combat can get a bit slow. So to address that, I've uh, created these uh, combat cards. So um, I'll take you through the general card layout. And uh, this is the PDF. Um, there's uh, 72 cards in the deck. And what you're looking at here is a tarot sized uh, card with a front and back. So starting at the top of the front here, we've got the quick NPC. So you've got their five stats with the stat modifiers, a speed and mana um, value for them. So um, speed is half agility and mana is the um, uh, product of uh, logic and empathy. So that's a, a very quick NPC if you need some quick stats. When we get down into the combat section... Uh, if you're using the cards for your own um, initiative, you would just use the numbers here, which would be 1 plus 1 to 2. That's not a very good initiative. If the initiative is for um, uh, an NPC you already have, it would be the 1 plus 1 plus their agility. The agility figure in here is the agility for the quick NPC. So if you've just pulled, if you just need a quick MOOC and you grab a card, that would be their um, uh, initiative. The hit location um, is just rolled on the hit location table, um, so they're going to be hitting the arm, and damage for this attack would come off of the endurance um, stat. Damage uh, comes off endurance in uh, three deep. Uh, so you know, each attack would hit a body part, and each body part has a, a, a tribute attached to it. So the damage... Um, uh, everything in 3 Deep is kind of light, medium, or heavy. Um, so light weapons do a D6, medium weapons do 2D6, three, uh, heavy weapons do 3D6. And the number in brackets is what's called special damage. If you're using a bludgeoning weapon, then um, that would be, say, stun. If you were using a flamethrower, it would be burning. Um, you know, fireballs would do fire damage. Um, you know, knives, things would do bleeding. Uh, special damage is taken every uh, sort of end of every uh, combat turn from that point on. So uh, if you're using a dagger, that would be um, three damage. You know, short sword or um, broad sword would be um, five damage. A great sword would be um, eight damage there. Uh, so that's your your basic damage. Not back. Uh, it goes one d six, two d six. 3d6 now if someone was um, in a precarious position where they couldn't get a, you know, a good grip say if they were flying or on a balance beam or something like that um, swinging from a rope you would only roll 1d6 if they got you know a regular you know sort of solid brace whatever um, it'd be 2d6 if they were in a position where it'd be very hard to knock them back so they were you know up to their waist in water so they got extra resistance you'd roll 3d6. You then take the knockback figure and deduct it from the damage. If you've got anything that's left over, um, then you would be knocked back that many yards or meters. Uh, in melee, you get the choice to move with them if you force them back. With ranged weapons, you don't. They just they move or they don't move. Uh, so in this case, if you'd hit them with a great sword and you'd done eight points of damage and they were um, just standing in front of you, the knockback is seven, damage was eight, so they were pushed back a meter. Um, so you could follow them, which if you were trying to drive back a, a, a you know a shield wall, say for example, um, you, know, you could push back at that point. Um, if someone was on a wall or on a guard tower and you'd um, hit, knock them back, you know if it was a heavy crossbow. And you've done uh, you know, a meter of worth of uh, knockback that could knock them off the guard tower. Uh, now shields either work or they don't work, and uh, there's an activation roll uh, depending on how big the shield is. So what I've done is I've re pre-rolled the shield, so you just know whether the shield has worked or not depending on the size. 
So if they had no shield, then um, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, if they did, in this case, the roll was very poor and only a wall shield would have, um, have been applied in this situation. The final bit is just some dice rolls. Um, everything is 1d6, 2d6, 3d6. Um, so you can use that for skill rolls, combat rolls, um, and that sort of thing. Uh, anything where you uh, need a roll. Uh, so you've got some pre-rolled uh, dice here at the bottom. So that's the combat cards. You can run you know, a complete uh, character's actions off of one card without having to page flip um, or make multiple rolls. Where it can get slowed down is when you um, make an attack roll, then you have to roll for the location, um, well, even before that, you roll your initiative, then you make your attack roll, then you roll for location, then you're rolling damage, then you're rolling knockback, whereas then your defender's rolling their shield. So it, you can end up with uh, lots of dice rolls. Uh, it was set up to be interactive combat. So you would... Uh, you know, the defender doesn't just take get hit and take damage. The defender does get to roll their shield if they um you know, if they have one. You know, so and some rolls were set up to be high. Some rolls were set up to be low, because if you've got someone with dice that just happens to keep rolling sixes, at least it would balance out. You know, needing to roll low to activate your shield wouldn't help someone with dice that were always rolling sixes. So these speed up and reduce the number. of of um, dice rolls needed in a typical combat round. The solo side of the uh, card, which is the back of each card, um, obviously you ask a question and you decide on the likelihood. The result has been pre-rolled with the modifiers applied. Um, so if it was a 50-50 question, in this case, the answer would be no but. If we flip to the next card, the answer would be yes. Um, no, so it's all just been pre-rolled for you. Um, so next is the plot twist. Now, um, not every question is thrown out by a, a plot twist. Uh, if you do get one, the second card here actually does have one. It says a remote event. So something not in your immediate uh, scene has... Um, changed the situation now in this case the action um, for that plot twist is a weak npc helps and you could interpret that maybe a, a bystander who's um you know, just a, a completely innocent bystander so that would be the weak they're an npc and helps now that that could be they've called the guard or maybe they just decide, you know, um, they don't want to get involved and they just shut the shutters and they're not um, going to get involved. All depending on where you are. If you need help, then them calling the guard helps you. If you're the one that doesn't want to be caught, then the fact that they think, you know, they don't want to get involved is, is the help. Uh, NPCs could be you know, anything. You know, I, I don't need to tell you about that sort of thing. Now, you, you can also use the action... Uh, for controlling reactions within a game you don't have to wait for the plot twist but uh, if you roll a, a, a plot twist then um, you, know, you should apply it at that point prompts these are used for um, uh, sort of open questions um, and uh, just scene setting questions uh, they're inspired by um, the mythic, the, the great big um, sort of mythic D100 tables, where well, these have been pre-rolled for you. And uh, interrupted scene, there is a, as you move from scene to scene, so you would draw a card each time you did a scene change. And some of the scenes are interrupted. That is not that common. So there you go. Um, you know, so this one uh, does have an interrupted scene. And it just tell, it's just a flag. It says you know, it's yes or no. They aren't very common. Uh, but you could then, or that you could then use the action again to suggest you know, something that could cause the interruption. Um, so here we've got kind of the complete opposite. We've got a hostile NPC hinders you in some way. 
so that's it that's both sides of the cards it i think i mentioned it was a 72 card deck and they are tarot sized uh it's in the pdf oh right i should mention that um if you buy the digital cards you get the pdf for home printing you also get um 144 so it's 72 cards back in front uh, png images which can be uploaded to um dice roller apps uh, or you can print them uh, the images onto uh, sticky labels like avery label sheets um and then you know, stick them to cards if you wanted to um you know, make your own uh, card because i know for some people um ordering de uh, decks of cards uh, it the the cards you know, aren't that expensive but the delivery is horrendous um, i have to wait a month to seven weeks to get cards delivered so uh, yeah that it hopefully the png images will give you um everything you need to um create your own physical deck or you can just um print off the uh of the hit the pdf i generally would use um one side uh of printing it so say just the uh, even cards if i only wanted the fronts if i'm not using the sorry just the odd cards if i'm just using the fronts if i don't need the solo rules and then you can make a separate uh, solo deck if you wanted and just print them to light cards and use a guillotine to crop them so that's it um those that's the card deck uh that should be on sale on um monday the uh, 24th uh, of may Okay, thank you very much.